What's up everybody, RetroWolf88 here, and today we are going to take a look at a game that I've been very excited for, City of Brass. This game was released on February 8th on the Nintendo Switch for $19.99. This is a first-person roguelike game that uh, is set in kind of an Arabian-themed um, environment. It looks really cool. Now, I've already played through the tutorial as well as one run in the game, so I'm a little bit familiar with the game before we start this impressions video. So we're just going to jump right in. If you enjoy this video, please be sure to subscribe for more content like this in the future. Let's get started. Before we start, I do want to show you one thing. So when you click New Game, you've got different characters to choose from. Of course, some of them are locked. They unlock as you reach higher ranks in the game because just like most other roguelike games, when you die, you gain experience points, and those experience points kind of uh, give you a sense of progression so that you can progress further into the game. So I assume that these new characters that you unlock are probably better than the starter characters. It tells you their abilities, their starting loadouts. So if you come down here to blessing, burdens and blessings, this is pretty cool. I like this. So it says divine blessings and burdens allow you to make the game easier or harder depending on the challenge you are after. So you have eight different blessings you can choose from that will do things to make the game easier, like increase your damage, give you more health. You have different burdens that you can choose from to make the game more difficult. However, it looks like these are locked. You have to do certain things to unlock these burdens. So I like that. I like that you have the ability to kind of customize the difficulty of the game to your liking with various traits. That's a cool idea. Now for now, I'm not going to choose any of those because I want to have the uh, original experience. So let's jump in. In my first run on this game, I very quickly realized that this is not an easy game. Um, this is definitely not one of those games that you want to rush through in a hurry. You really got to kind of take your time and be methodical. Um, and be very tactical because if you don't, if you just rush in guns blazing or swords swinging, you're probably going to die. So I start off with this whip. I can do some cool stuff with the whip. If you hit an enemy in the head with your whip, it will stun them. Um, then you got your sword attack. You've got a push attack so you can push enemies into traps. Um, you can also, with the left bumper, you can pull enemies towards you and try to pull them into traps. You've got destructible things in the environment that you can hit to damage enemies. There's things you could pick up to throw at enemies. Now, these potions, um, if you haven't already drank the potion, you're not going to know what it does. So let's go ahead and drink this one and see what it does. Potions have a time limit. Sap of Salatar. Hold and throw an endless supply of volatile vessels. Now that's pretty cool. Now let me show you what volatile vessels are. So this is our journal. As you encounter things in the game like enemies, items, new weapons, and, and things like that, you will get an entry for them in the journal so that you can read more information about them. So if we go to, um, let's see, weapons, no, items, yep. So vessel of volatility. So this is an explosive that you can throw. So this potion, while it lasts, will give me unlimited vessels of volatility to throw. So I'm going to take advantage of that while I have it. All right, all right. We'll come back to that genie now. There's a trap here that I don't want to get hit by. Huh? Not sure how I'm supposed to avoid that trap. All right, let's take advantage of these explosives. While oh, uh, it's already ran out. So you can also pick up things in the environment to throw at enemies, which is pretty cool. Um, here's another potion. Let's see what this one does. The tonic of healing, half a heart restored is better than none. Okay, so it heals me for half of a heart, which is good because I did take some damage. Now, if I hit this enemy in the head, it's going to stun him and give me the opportunity to get some hits in. Alright, of course there's breakable objects in the environment. There are also treasures that you can find. Um, you notice in the top left hand corner of the screen there is a uh, gold amount and you just saw it increase so you can pick up these treasures to increase that and you spend them at genies to get new abilities uh, new weapons and things of that nature which I'll show you as soon as I find another one 
As I said, there are things in the environment that you can destroy to help you kill enemies like this, for example. That throws out a bunch of uh, fireballs. Alright, let's go through this door. Alright, here's a genie right here. Let's... Okay, I just got hit with a trap. Breath of Disintegration. A caustic blast of hot sand as destructive as the passage of time, but faster. Okay, so I'm taking damage. And there was an enemy. I did not realize he was there. Alright, so here's a genie. So as you can see, you can buy upgrades from the genie for your weapons. Uh, you can buy upgraded armor. Uh, let's go ahead and get some better armor. So the plate of porcelain. Let's see what that is. More decoration than defense. This armor shields you from only a single blow. Okay, so once uh, once I get hit, I will lose that armor. So let's just try not to get hit. Alright, so stunning the enemies with your uh, whip is definitely an important part of the strategy in this game. Now that thing right there, I can grab with my, with my whip and it will launch me forward. Um, you can use that to kind of be tactical during combat as well to uh, get around the environment a little bit faster. The big problem that I'm running into in this game is that I keep getting hit by traps. Um, so I've got to be more conscientious, conscientious of traps. So here is an ability that will disable traps. I don't have enough gold to even purchase that, so we will ignore that for now. Just take this guy out. So yeah, stunning the enemies with your whip is definitely important. Also using the environment to your advantage is important. So I'm discovering, you know, just like a, any good roguelike, you really, as you play the game more, you discover the strategies that work well, you discover the items and weapons and loadouts that work well for you and your play style, and, um, you know, you eventually progress further and further into the game, especially as you learn the enemies. Um, so we got this potion. I probably should not have drank that. Nope. Nostrum of Venom. Though you yourself will suffer from the venom, so will all those around you. Well, that's great. I guess while this potion is in effect, I only have half of a heart, but it will also affect other enemies around me. Alright. Whoa! You just came out of nowhere, and so did that trap. So you gotta be careful when you're going through doors, because there might be a trap right here, and guess what? I've not figured out a way to... Uh, I guess, uh... Oh, okay, so if I hit it with my trap and make it go off, then in theory I should be able to run by it. Awesome. Alright. So, I need to watch out for that. If you, uh, one other thing that I've discovered is that if you hit an enemy, um, if you hit their weapon, with your whip, they will drop their weapon. So that's another uh, very useful thing to remember in this game. Okay. So I'm down to one heart. So we're not doing very good on this run. But that's okay. Because I'm still learning the game. Still learning what works and what doesn't. Using these throwable objects to your advantage is definitely a good strategy to use. Because they seem to uh, they seem to work well against these enemies. Now watch this. I'm gonna get this guy's attention, and I'm gonna try to drag him. Ah, uh, that didn't work out too well. All right. Well, you can drag enemies with your whip into traps, but it's a little difficult to pull off. So health in this game is very expensive. When you buy it from a genie, it costs 250 gold, and you only get like I think you only get a heart. Yeah, you only get one heart. You know, it's uh, it's kind of risky. I think I'll hold off on that, though. Oh, I almost got hit by that trap. Really got to watch out for traps in this game, because they are all over the place. So, the enemies can also get killed by traps, as I've stated, which is great. You'll find treasures hidden in these barrels sometimes, so it's always good to destroy those. So far, I am really enjoying this game. I think that I'm going to do a review on it, you know, once I play through enough of the game 
what have we here? Seems that I've found a uh, secret room with some treasure. Oh yeah, this is good. I'll probably go back and buy uh, buy one of those hearts now. See what's in the chest. A lot of yep. I'm definitely gonna go back and buy one of those hearts. So you can also slide when you run by pressing the A button. If you press the A button while you're not running, you'll enter kind of a crouch mode. Let's go buy a heart. Watch out for the traps. Okay, so we have a heart now. Now once you purchase something from the genie, it seems like, oh crap. Okay, so this I don't like. Eventually you'll start getting chased by these fiery balls and you can't kill them. All you can do is avoid them. Um, I don't really like that, and I don't understand why there's nothing that I can do about it. See, they just killed me. Killed by a dervish. So as you can see, it when I died, tell, it tells you how much loot you got, what you were killed by, uh, what rank you're at, how long the run lasted. Uh, you get some experience points. If you reach the end of the bar on the experience point tracker, you'll progress to the next rank. Eventually, you'll unlock more things in the game. I did not do very good there, but like I said, this game is difficult. And most roguelike games are difficult um, in the beginning until you start getting used to the game and learning what works and what doesn't. But let's check this dervish out. So, pure energy, spirit, and anger. The dervish cannot be defeated and must be avoided instead. I don't know how I feel about that. There's got to be a way to get away from that enemy completely. But you saw it chased me into another room and it killed me. Let's start another run, and this time I'm going to choose the Traveler. Let's see if they're, they they both have the same starting loadout and moves, but let's see if there is any difference between the two. I suspect it's just a, you know, you can either pick a male or a female starting character kind of thing. They, otherwise, they're probably the same. Yeah, I don't really care for that Dervish enemy, but, you know, it is what it is. All right, should drink this potion, see what we got. Distillate of storm. A pulsing storm of lightning stuns those around you. Alright, that's pretty cool. So, if you see those traps, make them go off and run past them as quick as you can. Okay, summon companion. So, that is actually very useful. So, if I get the money, I might come back. Yeah, I definitely like this potion. Keeping the enemy stunned. That is quite useful. It's about to run out though. Alright, let's grab some treasure. I like that potion. Here's another one. Uh, this is another one that we have not discovered yet. So let's see what this is all about. Fluid of the Prospector. See the wealth that you seek with clarity. Okay, so this potion makes treasures stand out a lot more. Um, that's pretty nice. Alright, so we got an archer here. Let's go ahead and pull her. Oh, that did not work. So as you can see, when I hit them with my whip, it makes the bow, it makes the bow uh, fall out of their hands, which is great. Uh, pulling enemies towards you, ah oh, shoot! Pulling enemies towards you with your whip is also an incredibly useful tactic. Man, these traps! I'm telling you, you really got to watch out for those traps because they are everywhere. Alright, so I can buy a heart, but I think I will hold off on that. Like I said, this game is pretty difficult. Which is fine, you know, I like hard games, so do not mind the difficulty. Now these guys rush at you really quick, but they do go down with one hit. Alright, so you're kind of seeing the ebb and flow of combat. Hmm. I have a feeling there's a lot of secret areas to find in the game as well. Um, oh yeah, so let me show you what this does. So you grab that with your whip and it launches you forward. So that's pretty cool. So far this is not a very good run, but maybe we can change that. Definitely worth it to use these 
to your advantage. So I wonder if the uh, those dervish enemies, I wonder if it's like if you don't make it through the level in a certain time limit that they'll start to chase after you. If that is the case, I don't know how I feel about that. Hey, we got a uh, we got a new weapon, the Needle of Tears. Fast as a viper, but the wounds only run half as deep. So it's a faster sword, but it doesn't do as much damage. So I can swap back to my other sword, and I think I will. I don't really want that weapon. I'd rather stick with what I've started to get used to for now. now I can't help but notice that that uh, timer in the top right hand corner is consistently ticking down. So it makes me think that when that runs out, that's when the dervish are going to come after me. Alright, new divine burden unlocked, breakneck. Okay, so I've unlocked my first burden. Uh, the game's hard enough as it is right now, so I don't think I want to use any of those at this time. have we here aha that was a lot of gold all right so there's these secret rooms here that I've found a couple of times and uh, actually we got one of these on camera earlier a lot of treasure so I really hope I can find a genie soon there's one right there okay leap of stumbling Let's take this guy out. Alright, I think the coast is clear now. Let's see what we got here. The thong of the thong of vines, pads of silence, leap of stumbling. Let's uh let's try the thong of vines. So this gives me a new whip. A devious magic summons tangling creepers to slow your enemy's progress or approach. Hmm, not sure how that works. Uh, let's also buy the Leap of Stumbling. Upon landing from great height, the ground shall tremble and enemies fall. And you can also make a wish at a genie and that will unlock more powerful abilities. Strike of Execution, why not? Your attacks will do extra damage to those who have been tripped. And I just got hit by a trap. Ah, that's how you trip an enemy. Okay. So if you whip them in the legs, you'll trip them. And this ability should make me do more damage. Oh yeah, that's I like that. I like that a lot. Again, I am not watching out for those traps enough. Yeah, that's a, that's a cool ability for sure. I have half of a heart left, so I don't anticipate I'm going to last much longer. Grease of Quickness. So I'm trying to trip them up so that I can use this more powerful attack. potion is making it a little more difficult to yep I'm dead that's city of brass um, this is definitely a difficult game so if you if you don't like difficult games and you don't like roguelikes this may not be the game for you but if you're like me and you do like a challenge and you love the roguelike genre and you love first-person games like this then you might want to check this game out again I think I'm gonna play it some more and do a full review on it because I'm really liking it and I want to get better at the game as well. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more content like this in the future. And stay tuned for my review on this game as well as a review for Away Journey to the Unexpected, which will be posted in the near future. Thanks again for watching, and I will catch you all in the next video. See you later. <laughs>